Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to look at GCP VPC service controls, a powerful defense in depth feature that helps secure your cloud data beyond IAA. I'll walk you through some common risks in cloud environments like publicly exposed storage, leaked service account keys, and data exfiltration threats. And then we'll see how VPC service controls can protect against these risks with secure perimeters and controlled ingress and egress policies. In cloud environments, the standard way to manage access to storage services is through Identity and Access Management, or IAM. Every major cloud provider, whether it's AWS or GCP or Azure, offers IAM as the primary mechanism to define who can do what on storage services like GCS buckets or BigQuery DBs. This is a solid foundation for access control. That said, IAM by itself isn't always enough. And in a large scale, fast moving environment, relying solely on IAM leaves gaps that attackers can exploit. This is where the need for defense in depth becomes clear. Here are three common risk scenarios where IAM controls alone fall short and data security is compromised. Number one, storage accidentally made public. Developers may misconfigure IAM by enabling public access unintentionally exposing the entire storage bucket to the internet. Number two, leaked service account keys. A service account is granted storage permissions, but if a long lift key is created and that key is leaked, anyone with that key can access sensitive data with no restrictions. Number three, insider threats and data exfiltration. Where a compromised compute resource uses its permissions to move data out of company's environment into an attacker controlled cloud account. Now these scenarios are not edge cases. They are real risks in cloud environment across enterprises today. The good news is GCP provides an additional layer of protection, VPC service controls. By creating service perimeters around sensitive resources, VPC service controls help contain these risks and reduces the blast radius of misconfigurations or compromise credentials. Let's see how this works with the demo. So the first risk that I'm going to show you here is uh, that, that VPC service controls can help prevent is that this GCS bucket can be made publicly exposed. So anyone on the internet can access it. So let's try to do that from the console. So here's my GCS uh, bucket and there is an object demo.txt within it. I will click on permissions. And uh, first of all, I'll need to disable the prevent public access prevention control and then i will proceed to grant access to all users and uh, and this all users means anyone on the internet and then i will assign the storage object viewer role to all users now this makes my bucket public to the internet but let's confirm so to confirm this i will no need to go to the object to the object and use the public URL to access it. So as you can see, the bucket object is now public and anyone on the internet can view it. So that covers risk number one. Let's see the second risk of leaked service account keys. Here's my service account. Notice it has a long lived key attached. In fact, the expiration here is set to year 9999. That means this key basically never expires. The service account also has storage admin permissions on the bucket that we created earlier. Now think about it. If someone gets hold of this key, they instantly get full access to the bucket. Let me switch to the command line and show you. First, I will activate the service account using the JSON key file. Now once this is done, I can simply run a JSUtil cp command to copy an objects directly from the bucket. Anyone with this leaked key can access sensitive data, no matter where they are with no secondary security checks. Now let's take a look at risk number three, data exfiltration from a compromised compute workload. Here I have got a cloud run function called CSM demo function. Now this function is attached to the same service account we created earlier, the one which had storage admin permissions to our GCS bucket. And inside the code for this function, there are essentially two API calls. The first call reads the GCS bucket and copies the data from there. And the second call 
copies this object into another bucket. But notice that this different bucket is in another GCP project. In other words, the function is exfiltrating data outside of this account. Let's test this function. I will trigger this function from Cloud Shell, and here are the logs. The function successfully accessed the GC's bucket and printed out its contents. Hello, I'm an object in the Google Cloud bucket. But more importantly, it also copied that same object into an external project. And as you can see here, the data is now sitting in another account. That means data exfiltration was successful. And that's a classic insider thread or compromise workload scenario. All right, now that we have seen the risks in action, let's move on to securing them by creating a VPC service controls security perimeter around our GCS bucket. You'll find VPC service controls under the security section of the GCP console within the zero trust category. Now, if this is your very first time setting it up, the console will ask you to create an access policy at the organization level before you can move forward. That's exactly what I'll do here. So I'll switch over to the org view, create a VPC control policy. I'll give this policy a name and then add the project that contains our GCS bucket. You'll also see an option here to assign a delegated admin with least privileged role. I'm skipping that step here for simplicity, but in a production setup, that's a great best practice to explore. Now that our org level access policy is created, we are ready to move forward and build out the project level enforcements. Now let's switch over to the project view and create our first VPC service controls parameter. Inside the console, you will notice two modes, enforced, which actively blocks traffic, and dry run, which is great for testing without real impact. For this demo, I'll go with enforced. Next, I'll click new parameter, give it a name, and since this is our very first parameter, I'll stick with regular parameter option. For more complex setups, you could actually bridge parameters together, but let's keep it simple for here. Next, I'll add the project that contains the GCS bucket we have been working with. Then under services to connect, I will select cloud storage API because that's exactly what we want to secure. For now, I'll keep everything else as default. We'll come back later to fine tune ingress and egress policies. But there's one thing I do need to configure right now. If I don't explicitly allow my own user identity, I will actually lock myself out of the bucket. So let's fix that. I'll create a new ingress rule called allow admin user. For identities, I will add my currently logged in account, which is admin at the rate cloud security masterclass.com. For sources, I'll keep all sources and all resources to keep this straightforward. And there's that. I'll hit done and finally create. Woohoo! Our first VPC service controls parameter is now live. So let's see what really changed after creating this parameter around the GCP bucket. What actually happened to the risks we talked about earlier? So back in the command line, if I run the exact same gsutil command to access the GCP bucket via the service account keys, this time I get an access denied error due to VPC service controls. And notice the error comes with a unique identifier. So let's copy this identifier and head over to the violation analyzer section in the VPC controls service controls menu. Here I can see the, this request was denied due to no matching access levels. Because since we haven't defined any ingress policies yet, all access to the cloud storage APIs is automatically blocked. And the analyzer shows me full request details, including the service account name, the identity that makes that call, and even the, the networking de details regarding the caller. Okay, let's check public access on the GCS bucket. Is it still working after we apply the service parameter? Here's our bucket. Right now, it's publicly accessible since all users have storage object viewer permissions. But when I open the public object URL, uh, which can be found here, I immediately hit an error. Request violates VPC service controls. Notice the unique violation identifier here as well. And if I check that ID in my violation an analyzer, it shows the same reason we saw with the service account case no matching access levels. Now, what about the cloud function? Let's test that too. And just as you would expect, it also throws an error. Request is prohibited due to VPC service control policies. The reason, same as before, no matching access levels. 
So with the parameter now in place, it looks like all of our risk avenues are blocked. But here's the catch. What about legitimate access? In our case, the function talking to the bucket is a valid flow. And right now, it's not working either. So how do we fix that? Let's do it next using ingress and egress policies. Now let's create an ingress rule to allow traffic from our cloud run function. I will edit the existing parameter. Then I'll go to ingress policy and add add ingress rule. I'll name it allow function. For identities, I will add the service account that is linked to the cloud run function. Then for sources, I will pick the VPC network that I have already created for this demo. Now the reason why we want a VPC here is because uh, we don't want to allow all traffic from the service account. Right? We just want to allow the traffic coming from an approved VPC. Because if we allow traffic from all the service accounts, it will also allow the traffic from the service account keys that are long lived. So we don't want that. We just want to allow the traffic from a VPC. And then later on, we will link this VPC to our Cloud Run function. So for resources, I will leave it as all allowed just for the demo. And then hit continue and save. Next, we need to add our Cloud Run function to the VPC that we just allowed in the ingress policy. Inside the networking section of the function, I'll select connect to VPC for outbound traffic and then choose the VPC and the subnetwork. Now this part is very important. Make sure to select route all traffic to the VPC. Why? Because this ensures that any traffic from the function, even to public endpoints like cloud storage APIs, goes through the VPC. One more key networking note, this VPC already has cloud NAT attached to it. And that's what allows outbound traffic from the function to public endpoints, like our GC's bucket. Without Cloud NAT, this setup would fail. Finally, click on Deploy. With our ingress rule now in place, let's test the function again. Uh-oh, we still get an error. But notice this time, the error is different. It's complaining about not being able to copy the object to another bucket. And when we check the logs, we can actually see the function was able to read the object from secure GCS bucket, which means the ingress rule is working fine. The failure is happening when the function tries to write to an external bucket. To confirm this, let's check the violation analyzer. And here we see a brand new error, network not in same perimeter. Looking deeper through the request, the analyzer shows us that this is an egress violation. VPC service controls detected that data was leaving our perimeter to an external project, and so it blocked the request. Coming back to our diagram, here's the current state. Ingress to the bucket is allowed, but only from the service account attached to our Cloud Run function, and only if it's coming from our approved VPC network. But egress to anything external is still blocked. So let's create an egress rule that allows data transfers from our GCS bucket to a specific GCP project only. I will edit the service perimeter as I did for the ingress policy. And this time I'll go to egress policy. For identity, I will add the same service account used by the Cloud Run function. For destination, notice there are two options, Google Cloud resources and external resources like AWS or Azure accounts. Here, I'll choose Google Cloud resources and I'll click on select projects and add the project number for our target GCP project. Finally, I will save the parameter. Now let's test the function again. This time, no error. The request succeeds and we can confirm the data is copied to the target GCS bucket in a different GCP project. And here's our final solution diagram. We have successfully mitigated three common data security risks in cloud environments using VPC service controls. At the same time, we have allowed legitimate ingress and egress flows to continue working. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more cloud security deep dives.